really don't want to do this stupid intro, but I guess I have to, otherwise nobody's going to subscribe. What's up, guys? All right, so back working on this twin turbo Mustang project and started going through some of the wiring and I really just wanted to talk about wiring. So this is the wire right here that was actually coming from the fuse panel up front going to the back of the car connected to the battery. Uh, and this is a really light eight gauge wire. And I kind of wanted to talk about some of the differences between the wires. A lot of you guys probably know this stuff already, especially if you're into car audio and uh, that's why I have a lot of car audio wiring. So a lot of my OG subscribers are really maybe gonna like this video. They used to do a lot of car audio stuff back in the day. So this is what's called a copper clad aluminum wire. And basically what this is, is it's, a, it's an aluminum wire and it has like copper coating on all of the strands. So this is a really light wire compared to OFC copper. OFC stands for oxygen free copper and the copper is obviously going to have a higher current load rating. The aluminum is going to be a little bit lighter and it's going to be cheaper. So you're kind of sacrificing some of the current load to save a little bit of money. But if you want to match the current load, you have to get a much bigger wire. So I have some OFC 8 gauge, some uh, copper clad aluminum CCA 8 gauge. I have some CCA 4 gauge, CCA 0 gauge, and then I have some 1-aught OFC copper, some 1-aught welding wire, and I actually have a 4-aught welding cable. So I want to talk about this stuff. I do have a scale out here so we can weigh it and look at it and talk about some of the pros and cons. All right, so I'm going to take the CCA 8 gauge that was hooked up in the car, go into the fuse box, and this is about 5.1 ounces. So I'll take that one off. Now I'll take this OFC 8 gauge and put this on. And that's 5.1 ounces. So I set it up that way for a reason. Now I'll take the OFC, this is the copper, and look how long this wire is. This is probably about four feet. So now I'll take the CCA wire that was in the car. I have the strands together. That's where the uh, copper 8 gauge ends. And then I still have like another five feet of wire to get the same weight. So the aluminum wire is like less than half the weight. I'll actually take them and I'll double it up right in the middle. So if I double it up right in the middle, I still have like an extra foot of wire. So there's about twice as much wire for the same weight on the CCA, but you're gonna have about half of the, the current carrying capacity if the conductor is the same size. Now here is looking at the ends of the cable. There is the CCA aluminum. This is the OFC. So look at the shininess on the left. So when that's cut, you can actually see it's like a bright aluminum color where the copper is a little bit darker. So the interesting part about this is when I flip them over on the ends, the CCA wire actually looks like it's copper and the OFC wire actually looks like it's aluminum. So this is actually a copper wire, but it's tinned because the copper actually oxidizes pretty easily and like gets corrosion on it. So the tinning will help prevent the corrosion. And this wire here is aluminum, but it actually has like a copper tinning, copper coating on it. So the aluminum will carry less current and it'll be cheaper, but you need a much bigger wire to carry the same load. So now this wire here is actually, it's, this is a New Concepts OFC copper wire. So this is actually pretty heavy compared to something like this, which is a zero gauge aluminum wire. And this stuff is pretty light. So this copper wire is gonna carry a lot bigger load than something like this, but you're gonna pay a lot less for this. And I really think for some people, it's like a psychological thing. Like they see a big wire and they think that they're covered just because it's a big wire, even though that this is not gonna carry as much as you need. So this might carry like 150 amps and people will put a big amp on it and try to pull like 300 amps through it and not have very good luck with that. So in some situations, it's better to just pay for the copper wire because you can carry the same load with a much smaller diameter wire. If we look at this New Concepts battery cable sheet, you see that their OFC Colossus cable, max load rating at 20 feet is 150 amps, but their basic four gauge CCA wire at the bottom, max load rating at 20 feet is 60 amps. So if you just see a video of some guy wiring up his race car and he's using four gauge welding cable, and you go out and you try to do the same thing and just save some money buying a four gauge CCA cable not knowing what's going on. You just bought a wire that's only going to be capable of carrying half the load rating and could potentially create some problems for yourself. So in this example here, this is a CCA wire. This is a one out welding cable. These are like pretty much the same size, physical size. You can see one is aluminum, one is copper. 
but this one is going to carry like twice as much current as this one. So if you're worried about space, if this was your size limitation on space, you'd want to go with the copper one because you'd be able to carry more load safely. So some of it may come down to physical space, like you may not really care that much how big the wire is and you just want to get it a little bit cheaper and size doesn't really matter. But if size is an issue, you'd want to be able to get the max current load that you can so you could, you could get the copper wire and then you don't have to worry about the size limitation being an issue. So now let's look at this one-aught welding cable compared to the physical size of this one-aught CCA wire. You can see that the one on the right, the CCA is actually a lot bigger in diameter. So this wire is smaller and it'll be able to carry more load, but if you weren't really limited on space, you could go with something like that. But now let's compare this wire to the four-aught cable. So this CCA one-aught cable will probably carry like 150 amps. Now let's look at this compared to the physical size of the 4 aught cable. Just so you don't think I'm losing my mind here. There it is, 4. So now if you look at these, these cables, these are almost the same physical size. But this cable here is going to carry like 350 to 400 amps of current for the same physical size. So this wire here is about a 4 gauge cable size. This is a 4 gauge battery cable. And this is a one aught CCA copper clad aluminum cable. So a, a copper welding wire or this copper battery cable will carry the same amount of current as this big fat wire here. So granted a lot of this will change. There's variables based on the, the length of the run and how well how good the connections are and stuff like that. But depending on the size of the run you could carry 150 amps through a four gauge cable or you could carry 150 amps through this gigantic CCA cable. So if you're trying to run, run a nice tight wire bundle, small wire bundle, it would make sense to do the copper wire or copper welding cable and it would help you a lot with physical size, wire routing, how well this stuff bends and all that jazz. Plus when you get to a point of crimping on these big lugs like this, these lugs are going to cost you a lot more. So if you're doing bigger physical size wire, you're going to need bigger heat shrink, you're going to need bigger lugs. So there's extra cost that goes into that too. So another consideration too when looking at this like cheap cable, it's hard, really hard to see on the camera, but the, the casing on there is actually pretty inconsistent. So you can see like this side of the case where my thumb is, there's not very much case there where this side is actually really thick. So the wire is actually almost rubbing through right there. So a lot of this like cheap CCA cable it has pretty inconsistent casing on it too. And you can actually rub through a little bit easier. So this is, this is the cable that actually came off this car. And this is actually like a nice quality battery cable. And that was rubbed on the exhaust. So it was burnt. It didn't actually burn through completely and create an arc which is good, but the quality of the casing is actually pretty important too, and you wanna have a nice casing on it. Or you need to run the wire really well and make sure it's protected. So you could protect it with loom, protect it with the routing, protect it with fuses and breakers. So hopefully that helps someone or somebody learns something. It's never gonna to hurt to just do a copper wire and always research what the wire is capable of, of handling. So each wire has a current draw rating by foot, and you usually want to do the full length of the circuit. So if you have a power run and you have a ground run back, that would be like the length of your circuit, not just the run from one point to another. And there's charts and stuff online that'll show that and help you determine what size wire you need for the amount of current draw. If you don't know the amount of current draw, you can usually Google it for whatever your source you need, especially like fuel pumps and stuff like that. If you're running fuel pump wires, uh, if you're running battery cables or alternator wires, your alternator wire, you're really gonna be limited by how much the alternator can actually put out. So once the alternator's limited, it's gonna start pulling from the battery. So if your alternator's only capable of putting out 105 amps, you don't need Gigantor 4 aught welding cable that that's capable of handling 400 amps. But then you have stuff like short circuit current from a battery, which will pretty much melt any one of these. So that's why it's good to have breakers and fuses on the car too, because the fuses and breakers are really there to protect the wiring from electrical fires, not to protect the devices necessarily. So if you get a short in the wire, you wanna make sure that that circuit opens up. If one of these wires shorts to ground, it doesn't really matter in a lot of cases how much, how big the wire is, because some batteries short circuit current is, you know, 600, 800, 1,000 amps, depending on the battery. So you're gonna melt that regardless. 
So make sure you research what size wire you need, what current you're drawing. Make sure you have good terminal connections, good crimps, because high current load creates heat. Heat creates resistance, and then it kind of just snowballs on itself. So if you have a bad or a loose connection, even though you have the right size cable, a loose connection could be causing heat, which is gonna create more resistance and make the problem worse. That's why you see fuses and terminals and stuff sometimes that are melted and not blown because it's not really like a shock of a high current load and it blows the fuse. Sometimes it's just a bad connection or a high current load that's like right on the edge where it's not gonna blow the fuse, but it'll actually melt the wire and create a bigger problem. So. So hopefully that helps. If you enjoyed the video, subscribe, leave a comment, go into the Apple store and put Blazer Builds YouTube channel on every one of the phones and have a nice day.